Bobby the Slug Bobby is a brown slug. She lives at the trunk in the forest. The forest is thick, shady and humid. A small farm is close by. The farmers had cut down a piece in the woods to have a sunny spot to grow a garden. For that reason, Bobby lives close to heaven. A blossoming orchard of brown cabbages, Swiss chard, highest trees, tender green lettuces, and lots of other delicious vegetables that Bobby enjoys filling her tummy while tunneling through the veggies, making the farmer very unhappy. Despite that life of abundance, something made Bobby sad. Stretched out in the green moss of the tree, She watches the bees and the beautiful butterflies fly by. And she wondered why she was like that, slimy, ugly, even a little repulsive. This is what she overheard the farmer say as he angrily spread ashes around the garden trying to keep those nasty creatures away from their vegetables. If only I could carry my house in tow, like my cousin the snail. I am less important than a humble earthworm. At least she can hide under the ground. She was feeling very hopeless when a strange bus distract her from her gloomy thoughts. These were two dragonflies arguing very angry. I told you to go to the left, said one of them. No, we had to go to the right, said the other dragonfly. What is going on? asked the slug. Something awful, answered the blue dragonfly flapping her transparent wings. We're in a big trouble. Tomorrow is the princess of the dragonfly's wedding. And the queen sent us to get her wedding dress. Mrs. Spider had it ready. She wove a cloth embroidered with small dandelion's flowers. It was gorgeous, interrupt the other dragonfly. But it was so thin and fragile, the dragonfly continued. We reap it, passing near a thorny bush. The princess cannot marry without her dress. The queen is going to be furious. We will be punished. What can we do? Bobby thought the queen had made a big mistake, leaving such an important matter in the hands of two clowns, but she didn't make any comment that would increase the grief of the dragonflies. On the contrary, she offered her help. I have been told that I can make very nice designs with my trail. My favorite pastime is decorating the fallen leaves of the trees. If you bring me a beautiful white flower from the garden, I could make a dress for the princess. 
Hmm, it would be worth a try, the dragonfly said. And they flew as fast as possible to find the most beautiful flower for the slug to do its work. Bobby worked all that afternoon making delicate silver drawings on the petals of a white chrysanthemum. And as almost always when we do things with love, care and dedication, we can achieve remarkable things. After a while, Bobby put before the amazed eyes of the dragonflies the most beautiful dress a bride could wish for. Let's take to the queen immediately, exclaimed grateful and relieved the dragonflies. And we still have to go back to get the veil over Mrs. Spider's house. Good luck, be very careful, the slug said. The sun was already hiding on the horizon when the dragonflies returned to the trunk where Bobby lived. They told her, the queen and the princess were dazzled with the dress you made. They want you to come to the wedding tomorrow. Bobby was overjoyed about the invitation, but her happiness lasted only until she realized she had no way to go to a royal wedding where everyone would wear their most elegant clothes. This is why she went up to the trunk to rest with some regret for missing the party, but also proud of what she had accomplished. She a humble slug. Curled up in the mossy bed, Bobby fell asleep thinking of the big celebration. She had a long and beautiful dream of dragonflies, butterflies, flowers, and beautiful colored insects. dragonfly bride shining in her silver decorate petal dress and a light transparent veil soft as the breeze. Mm -hmm.